Hey guys, so Baumart here. So what I'm doing today is I'm making a skiing do for my buddy George out of this piece of a farrier's rasp. And then later on, and later on in another video, I'll be making a bowie knife out of this piece of the rasp. So stay with me, and we'll do up another skiing do. Okay, so there's the final shape of the skiing do. I uh, checked it for straightness, so next thing to do now is just uh, anneal it. So we'll just let that charcoal cool down on its own. And as you know with charcoal, it takes a while for those embers to uh, cool and that'll allow the knife steel to cool slowly as well. And that'll soften it up. Okay, so the knife is annealed. I soaked it in vinegar and kind of scraped off a bunch of that fire scale. So now we're gonna hit it with this uh, preliminary belt. This is the one that uh, came with the grinder. I don't even know what grit it is, but it's a pretty heavy grit. So I'm going to use that to just start uh, cleaning up the face. Then we'll throw some blue fire on there, then uh, really shape this up.
Okay, so you saw me working on the uh, blade of the Ski and Do, and uh, for the handle, just like the other one I did, uh, it's oak flooring uh, handle. This is two uh, two slabs of that oak uh, carved out in the middle to get the knife tang in there. Uh, but on this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to do this kind of basket weave uh, pattern, similar to what's on uh, some of the Dirks and Ski and Do's from uh, antiquity. Uh, and so I'm also going to use uh, some brass pins to kind of accent the uh, the crossing points uh, and I'm also going to try at least for these first three dots uh, down the middle I'm going to try to make those uh, into rivets holding the knife tang into the handle so first thing I'm going to do is drill out the wood uh, and then I'll mark it onto the tang itself and then drill out the tang Alright, one, two, three, got them all. Okay, so I got the holes drilled out through the handle. And now I'm going to start carving in the, uh, the cross hatchings here. Using the uh, the knife blade seems to help keep it a uh, an even line throughout the entire piece here. But with the chisel, I'm able to get more leverage. So I'm going in and cleaning up some of these bits here. The chisel is good. I can just kind of rock that knife across. Okay, so we got the cross hatch carvings all done on both sides. Uh, I got my pins cut. This is just some uh, uh, brass pin stock, uh, 330 seconds. And so now I'm going to clamp this up and we're going to clean up the, uh, the butt end of the knife. Keeping that all uh, even and consistent. Okay, so the uh, got the pins in there, got the handle fitted up to the blade. Very nice taper on the on the handle there. Uh, but right now, I just need to even everything up. So in the past, I've been using my uh, workshop grinder. I actually got this uh, this guy working again. Uh, ended up having to take this apart, clean off the the um, the uh, wheel up here, uh, and then tighten down this screw here. Put some Loctite on it because this was this was coming off, but. Uh, so I've been using this kind of just for uh, woodworking, just uh, sanding up this, and so hopefully I'll be able to uh, get all my uh, edges here evened up and all that. So we'll fire up and see what happens. Okay, so I've got my little cross hatch design carved on there. I put a couple layers of uh, dark walnut stain to just darken that handle up uh, into a true skiing do coloration. Uh, and then what I'm also going to do here is put in some uh, brass pins. And I've got these escutcheon pins. And so I'm going to cut these down and put these at the uh, intersections of all the 
of all the uh, uh, cross cuts there. So the pins as they come are uh, pretty long. So the first thing I gotta do is uh, cut these down. And so I try to cut these at an angle. So we still have a little bit of a point there, uh, but it can't be too long and it can't be too short. Uh, Cause if it's too long, especially when we get into here where I have the, the tang carved out, I don't want them uh, poking through and interfering with the uh, the knife hit. But back in here, it's all solid wood, so this should be fine right here. So, Okay, so I got all the uh, brass tacks into my handle here. I also got the blade done. It was triple tempered, quenched in tallow, uh, and then I did a uh, soaked it in vinegar, and then did a brushed uh, finish with the wire wheel. Uh, I put a initial edge on here. It's not razor sharp yet, but uh, sharp enough to hurt myself. But uh, now I'm going to glue it up into the handle and uh, rivet in the uh, the handle pins. Got my two-part epoxy, so I'll mix that up and drop it down into the uh, tang hole here. I just glued the uh, two pieces of handle together with super glue, um, and I don't. That's that was really just to hold together for uh, the initial fit up and everything like that. So I don't necessarily trust it. So the pins will be doing most most of the uh, the holding for this and the epoxy is just kind of like an insurance policy. So that should make it a very tough, very durable knife. It's a very long working life. My buddy here is of Scottish ancestry. He's pretty good at breaking stuff. Time to put the handles, handle pins in. So I'm going to take it over to my anvil and uh, rivet these down. All right. Well, here's what the. Uh, finished knife is looking like in its uh, sheath. It's uh, basically a cross draw configuration so the belt will go through there and that'll hang uh, on on the belt. So the friend that I made this for is left handed and uh, I guess he likes to carry his gun on his left side and so he wanted this on his right but be able to draw it with the left hand. The brass pin design is kind of like a uh, set up like a traditional skiing do design like you would see on some of the uh, regimental uh, dirks and all that. Basically a uh, Scandi grind here, but uh, this thing just came out just wicked sharp. Uh, this thing, let's see if I can get this. Look at that, it's just taking off hair. Just popping that hair off, that is that is what I would call shaving sharp. So The handle compared to the very first skiing do that I ever made has got a, a bit of a taper here, so it's wider up here than it is here. Um, and so that's a very hand filling design. I, I really do like that. Uh, rounded up here. I like to be able to put my thumb on these because what's the skiing do? Uh, it's really a utility knife, but if you ever did want to use it as a last ditch self defense knife, I really feel that this is going to be uh, kind of the best in the reverse grip because you can get a very strong downward uh, stabbing blow with this. So, and you know, as like a boot knife or whatnot. That's how I feel it, uh, it's gonna excel at. I think my friend's really gonna 
dig this. He's a uh, he's a Scotsman at heart. He wears a kilt uh, pretty much all the time. So uh, he's going to be using this as his EDC knife. So I'm sure he'll be putting it through his paces, beating the crap out of it, report back to me, and uh, um, I'll just be constantly improving uh, my work. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, be more Viking.